welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today in the show, we welcome back Kristen Yates. She's an obstetrics gynecology physician and she wrote the Kevin MD article, Don't Call Me Doctor. Kristen, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So we'll get into your article in a little bit, but for those who didn't get a chance to listen to our first episode, which was, I think, near the beginning of this podcast, almost mm-hmm. a year ago, can you just please share your story and journey to where you are today? Yeah. So I'm about, I'm going into my sixth year out of residency and I landed the perfect job as an attending right out of residency um, back in my home, in my home state of New Hampshire. And despite everything being wonderful, great partners, great work environment, great call life, especially for an OBGYN, I felt the urge to leave medicine in the first year because of self-doubt imposter syndrome. So that led me on a several year journey to overcoming that and, and was able to stay in medicine and really enjoy my job and become and really find fulfillment. And now I am a life coach for other physicians to help them kind of have the same results if they want to stay in medicine or figure out what exactly they want to do. So tell me how specifically you overcame those obstacles so that you could stay in clinical medicine. Yeah, it was actually a little bit of a strange journey. It started through weight loss because I was just, I was on maternity leave after my second daughter was born. So I was, I was trying to lose weight, you know, for the 15th time in my life. And I found, I stumbled upon um, self-coaching and life coaching, and I used it for weight loss. And then I, when I had such great success with that, I said, I can probably use these same tactics of questioning your thoughts, you know, self-awareness, internal validation to be more confident at work and be more confident in myself as a doctor. And that's what I did. And it worked and it's continuing to work now. So you mentioned that you're in your first job um, mm-hmm. first attending job after residency. And yes. um, I'm approaching my 19th year and I'm still in my first job yeah. after residency as well. So I think that makes us a relative rarity when it comes yeah. to uh, attending jobs. Now for those uh, residents who are looking for new attending jobs who may not know the landscape, what kind of advice do you have for them so they can stay in their first job after residency? Yeah, I think having the mindset that you are allowed to want any type of job and balance that you want to have. And I think when I was becoming like finishing residency, it was literally like, I'll take any job. I will take Mm -hmm. any job. I just don't want to be a resident. And I didn't really have the foresight to say what exactly I wanted. And I really just got lucky to land a really great job. Um, And a lot of my colleagues didn't get that way. And they're already on their third or fourth job. So I think it's, having the confidence to know that you really can carve out a piece of medicine and practice the way you want to, it might be harder to find, but it is a hundred percent possible for you, but you have to know what you, what you want, not just in a year, but in five or 10 years to the best of your ability, like think more long-term instead of just anything but residency. So let's transition to the Kevin MD article that you wrote. It's titled, don't call me doctor. Now, for those who didn't get a chance to read your article, can you just walk my audience through it and share the story of why you decided to write it? Yeah, I think it's been an article article on my mind for a long time. And I was a little bit, I was feeling timid about writing it at first because especially for women physicians, there is this very strong um, desire to be seen as physicians and not students or nurses or cleaning staff or whatever. So there's this very strong movement towards like, I'm a doctor, I earn this degree, call me doctor. And that always kind of didn't sit quite right with me. And I couldn't exactly figure out why. And I was scared to put my thoughts and feelings into words because it was so against what other, how other women felt. And then finally, I, you know, I'm at a point now where I'm much more eager to lean into that discomfort and maybe stand in whatever my truth is and just see if it resonates with anybody else. So essentially, I talk about the fact that I actually don't like to be called doctor professionally. I don't introduce myself to as Dr. Yates to my patients. I introduce myself with my first name, and I really don't care that much if they think I'm a nurse or who, whatever, because what I realized is that ultimately has nothing to do with my ability to save their life in an emergency or 
cure them or heal them or listen to them. And really their perception of who I am has nothing to do with me at all and everything to do with them. And I went, once I was able to separate that in my mind, I realized that it, I was able to be, feel much more fulfilled and not let the little things bother me as much. Talked about a little bit of attention um, mm -hmm. about being a called doctor or being mistaken for a non-clinical staff person. Tell me a little bit about what you did to resolve the tension. Was there anything that you did to feel more comfortable being called a doctor or not? Yeah, I think that initially, like when I was a resident, it really would bother me. And I think it's kind of, you're surrounded, you're in that environment, you're surrounded by it. It's bo it bothers everybody else. So I just kind of took on that persona, but I never really did feel comfortable saying I'm a doctor or telling people I'm a doctor. And I think that's just me. I think mm -hmm. that's just how I am. And I, there's, there are certainly some things that I need to work on that maybe to, to resolve that completely. But I think for me, it was the fact that, and why I'm more comfortable now admitting that I don't like to be called a doctor. It's because I feel like it really limits me as a human being, mm -hmm. like doctors were put in a box. And if you're a doctor, you should behave this way. You should work this hard. You should do this. And I just feel like there's a lot of tension, not just from society, but for, from other doctors to behave a certain way or do a certain thing. And it felt really limiting to me. And so that's why from, I shifted instead of saying, I'm a doctor, I am Kristen. Doctoring is what I do. It's not who I am. And that really made me feel more expansive and whole than trying to shove myself into the, to, into the box of a doctor. Have you noticed any change in your relationships with patients or how patients respond to you by how you introduce yourself, whether you're Dr. Yates or whether you're Kristen? I don't think I'd notice a difference really because I never really bought on to the whole Dr. Yates thing. I mean, if there was some sort of emergency where I didn't have time to explain my role and they needed to know that I am the doctor who's going to be taking care of them, that I will use that terminology for brevity's sake. But for the most part, I like for a patient coming into my office for an annual exam or something like, I, I just want her to know to that she can talk to me. And I feel like it makes them, I think it makes my patients feel like I'm just here to listen to them. And if they have questions to answer their questions and, you know, to have their best interest in mind. So I think it's, it makes patients more comfortable and willing to open up to me sooner, especially where we only have 15 minutes to see patients. I think it kind of gets us one step closer to really getting to the root of a problem in the short time we have. So you're right that there are plenty of articles on Kevin MD that where physicians take um, a front if they're mistaken to be a, a non-doctor. Mm -hmm. Now, wh what would you, what would you say to articles like these on my site? Yeah, I think that it's all fine. And I, I just think, and it's important to know where you stand. And if you, and there are women and, and men certainly too, that I feel very strongly, like I earned this degree. I want to be called doctor. And, every, and I think that's fine to own that. My thought about it is if there, there's any discomfort there, or if you feel like there's ever a time in your life where you're feeling like you don't know what your really, what your identity is outside of a doctor then just question that a little bit and, and ask yourself, am I getting my full identity from being a physician? And then you at least have this awareness of, yes, I do, or no, I don't. And do you like living like that? And I think it's all, everyone has their own journey. There's no right or wrong, but I do invite everybody to ask themselves that question. Like, do I want to be called doctor? Does it make me uncomfortable? Because I don't know who I am outside of this role. So you mentioned it did take a little bit for you to put your thoughts into words. Mm -hmm. So now that um, this article has been published for a few months now, have you received any, any response to it? I have gotten so many emails and messages about how much it has resonated with doctors and not just women, women and men. I have had people reach out to me who have no idea who I am saying that's exactly how I felt. And it really resonated with me. And, and, um, it's been, that was surprising. I thought I was going to have to kind of put a shield up and say people, and there was some of that too. There was some of that, like I earn my degree. I want people to call me that. And I think that's fine, but I was actually very surprised at how many people 
went out of their way to reach out to me and say, this really resonated with me. Thank you for writing it. We're talking to Kristen Yates. She's an obstetrics gynecology physician, and she wrote the Kevin MD article, Don't Call Me Doctor. So Kristen, to take a step back, so I understand you do some coaching along with your clinical work as an mm -hmm. obstetrician gynecologist. Tell me about your journey in those two dual roles. Yeah, at first it was, I want to help other doctors who feel lack of confidence, who feel like they're suffering from imposter syndrome. And it kind of just, I followed each little crumb to see how I would next best serve other doctors. And it um, now has culminated in the coaching that I do now, the courses, the retreats I have, and that's what it looks like now. And I think it's still evolving, but that's, it actually, the more that I've stepped into this role as a coach, the more that I've been able to really enjoy my job. And it's almost like I can appreciate both of those roles and how they together can fulfill me in ways that each of them couldn't do alone. There are a lot of physicians who are a little bit burnt out from practicing clinically and they want to step mm -hmm. into a part-time coaching role. Um, how do you manage both and, and how difficult is it to juggle both roles? Right now I'm still working full time and I coach on uh, evenings and weekends and it really hasn't been a struggle. I mean, there are certainly weeks where I have a ton of coaching calls and um, I feel a little bit overwhelmed, especially if I'm post-call and <laughs> dragging a little bit, but it really hasn't been that difficult because I have done a lot of work with figuring out what's where my time belongs. And so it does mean I make sacrifices. Like I don't really watch TV anymore. I don't, I try to stay away from social media and really kind of have pulled in my circle of friends. And those are all just for my own personality. But once I was able to realize um, how much joy I was getting from coaching, then it was like a no brainer for me. Like this is what I wanted to spend my time doing. So it hasn't really been a challenge and I don't know that I'll continue to work full time and do it, but right now it's, it's going well. And my final question, what's your take home message that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience? I think the take home message is a repeat of the earlier question. And the, the thought of, do you get your entire identity from being a doctor? And if so, is that serving you in your life? Like, do you feel stuck? Do you feel like you want more? And I encourage you to see that tug or feeling stuck as an invitation to explore um, how else you can show up in this world or serve or find fulfillment. Kristen, thank you for coming back on the show and sharing your time and insight. Thank you so much for having me.